Hello everyone, welcome to video one of this tutorial series on docking um, small molecules to proteins using autodoc vena within UCSF Chimera. And today we are going to be starting with um, a coronavirus protein target, which is the uh, coronavirus helicase NSP13. And we're going to be looking at a co-crystallized structure of the helicase with a fragment bound in a pocket of interest. This is the C terminus B pocket, which is a um, speculated allosteric pocket to inhibit ATP hydrolysis and RNA unwinding by the helicase. And what we're going to be doing is um, looking at the fragment within this pocket. We are going to uh, remove the ligand from the pocket then redock the ligand to compare the crystal structure to the calculated docking uh, poses um, to see how close they match up so that we can use this as a kind of baseline for future calculations. So the first thing we're going to be doing um, is we're going to need to fetch the protein structure from the protein data bank. So if we go down to fetch and then we type in the PDB code, so you can search the PDB for your desired protein or desired target. Um, I happen to know this one as uh, 5RM9. And here you can see we've now got the protein. Um, we've got two copies of the protein. So this is a homodimer of the helicase. However, as you can see, um, when we inspect the pocket of interest, which is up here, the C terminus B end, um, only one of these copies has the fragment bound to it. So we're not really interested in uh, the other chain since that's not got any fragments bound to it and we only need one chain for our docking. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to select the chain that we don't want and we are going to delete it like this. Okay. So as you can see, we now have the protein. Um, we have the ATP pocket here with where these phosphates are bound. We have the RNA channel, which passes kind of through the center between the RecA uh, domains and the 1B domain. And then up here on the Rec uh, 2A domain, we have our fragment bound here, which is designated as EJQ. So just to make things easier, we can select that residue and we're just going to color it by element just so we can see the atoms that are in there. Okay. Perfect. So now what we're going to do is we want to study the interactions that are binding this fragment. So obviously this is a low molecular weight fragment. So the binding interactions um, are assumed to be not too strong. And indeed that is the case. Um, However, there are some interactions holding that fragment bound to um, the protein, and we want to know what those are um, for, for our docking studies going forward. So the first thing I'm going to do is save this as a new PDB file. Um, so you will want to create a folder for all your docking. And I'm just going to save this as PDB 5RM9 and save. Okay, so we have this saved as a PDB structure. Then I'm going to go down here into Discovery Studio, um, which is uh, free to download. Um, so this is all open source software, as is UCSF Chimera's free to download. Um, I will include the links for downloading that software in the description below this video. Okay, so now we're going to open back up the PDB file that we just saved. Okay, and as you can see, we have our ligand up here and we have our protein here. Um, you will notice that all the water molecules are present here, um, which we aren't interested in, um, obviously. So uh, we're going to, um, we are going to hide those waters. Just get rid of those, just so it's a bit easier to interpret. Obviously this, this still keeps the um, non-standard residues such as the phosphates and the zincs down in the zinc binding domain of the protein. And of course, it still um, keeps our ligand in the pocket. 
Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to study the interaction of the ligand with the protein. And to do that, we go to receptor ligand interactions. And we are going to define our receptor. And define this as our ligand. Okay. And once we have control and double clicked on that, it will highlight it in yellow. So we know we've selected it and it has now defined that as our ligand. Okay. So then we're just going to select ligand interactions and is immediately going to um, get rid of all of the chains that aren't showing interactions to the ligand. Okay. So this is, this is great. So now we have the fragment and we have the residues that are interacting. We have the, um, we have the angles and we have the distances and we have the, the chains that are interacting. Okay. So first things first, we are going to make sure that we have all the um, interactions that we're interested in. So hydrogen bonding, um, pi charge interactions, hydrophobic, um, so electrostatic, halogen interactions, etc. Cheers. Great. And, and also what we can do here is we can show the distance. So these values are given in angstroms. Um, and you will also see that uh, we can show the type. So, for example, we have high alcohol. We have conventional hydrogen bonding here between this carbonyl and the amide. We have um, a pi cation interaction between the uh, fluorophenyl ring and the arginine residue. We have uh, pi alcohol um, and we have a fluorine uh, carbonyl um, interaction, so, uh, probably a sigma hole interaction there. So this gives us a lot of information, um, which is very useful to know going forward for our docking. Um, what we can also do is we can show the surface around the pocket, which kind of gives us the shape of the pocket, which is interesting. So we can see the interactions that are forcing that fluorophenyl ring into um, that pocket there, which is interesting. Um, and, and that's being held there by a, by a hydrogen bonding interaction. Um, we can also expand this pocket if we wanted to make it a little bit bigger, just to see the kind of overall shape of that pocket. We can contract that. And um, we can also change this to, depending on what kind of surface we want to see, so we can change this to the um, ionizability of the surface, so whether it's basic or acidic. Um, we can have an aromatic surface here. So you can see there's, there's a large aromatic surface around this residue here. Um, and we can do this based on hydrogen bonding. So again, uh, hydrogen bond acceptors in green and donors in pink. Um, I'm just going to stick with the hydrophobic for now. Um, and one thing we can do um, to simplify this um, for uh, publications or for, for 2D is we can click uh, click on select uh, show 2D diagram and it will create this uh, 2D diagram of the fragment um, interactions, which is very useful for us as well. Um, so yeah, this is this is all useful information going forward because we can compare these interactions to any fragments or any um, small molecules that we dock um, in Orthodox Vena. So these are useful things to know how to do. Um, we can also add labels. Um, so for example, um, Uh, so our interaction uh, 
ones we already have here. Um, we can add our amino acids. So for example, uh, here, apply, and this will also give us the um, labeling of these residues that are interacting. Okay, so for example, we have this proline 593. Um, we have this leucine 590, uh, phenylalanine 472, um, arginine 502, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so this is just a 3D version of the 2D diagram that we're looking at on the right here. Okay, so that about covers us for our um, first lesson, uh, first video tutorial. Um, in the next one, uh, we're going to be taking this ligand and we're going to be removing it and we're going to be uh, docking it using autodoc vino. And then we're going to be comparing the binding scores and the poses to the crystal structure to um, use that as a baseline, um, a kind of a kind of starting point for the docking that we're going to be doing going forward. Okay, so thank you for your attention and I'll see you in the second video.